Section 50 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 16. Purgatory, The Third Ring, Anger, Free Will in the Corruption of the World. The gloom of hell, and of a night deprived of every planet, neath a narrow sky, darkened as much as possible by clouds, ne'er made so thick a veil before my face, nor to my feeling was so rough in tissue, as was the smoke which covered us up there. For that permitted not of opened eyes, because of which my wise and trusty escort drew near to me, and offered me his shoulder. Even as a blind man walks behind his guide, in order not to go astray, and strike aught that might hurt him, or might even kill. So, going through that foul and bitter air, I listened to my leader, who said only, Take care that thou be not cut off from me. Voices I heard, and each appeared to pray for peace and mercy to the Lamb of God, who taketh sins away. Their only prelude was Lamb of God, and all had but one word and intonation, hence among them all there seemed to be the fullest harmony. Are those then spirits, teacher, whom I hear? said I, and he to me. Thou judgest rightly. As on they go, they loosen, angers not. Now who art thou that cleavest thus our smoke? and yet dost speak of us as if thou still by monthly calends wert dividing time. These words were uttered by a single voice. My teacher therefore said to me, Reply, and ask him if on this side one goes up. And I, O creature that dost cleanse thyself, that beautiful thou mayst return to him who made thee, thou'lt hear marvels following me. I'll follow thee as far as I'm allowed. He answered, And... If smoke permit not sight, hearing, instead, will keep us linked together. I thereupon began, I go on high while in that swathing band which death dissolves, and through the infernal anguish came I here, and whereas God hath wrapped me in his grace so much that he would have me see his court by means entirely out of modern use, conceal not who thou wast before thy death, but tell it me, and whether toward the pass I rightly go, and be thy words our guides. Lombard I was, and Marco was I called. Familiar with the world, I loved the worth toward which all men have now unbent their bows. For mounting upward, thou art going rightly. He thus replied, and added, I beseech thee, pray for me there, when thou shalt be above. And I to him, I pledge my faith to thee that what thou askest of me I will do, but with a doubt I'll burst, unless therefrom I free myself. Simple at first it now is doubled by thy speech, which makes me here and elsewhere sure of that wherewith I link it. The world is certainly as wholly void of every virtue as thou tellest me, and is with evil big and overspread. But pray point out its cause that I may see and show it unto other men for one puts it in heaven, another here below. At first he heaved a sigh profound, which grief to Ah me! changed. Then, Brother, he began, The world is blind, and thou indeed comest hence. Ye that are living, still attribute upward each cause to heaven alone, as though it moved everything with it of necessity. If this were so, free will would be destroyed within you, and no justice would there be in having joy for good and grief for ill. Heaven starts your inclinations, though I say not all. But even supposing that I did, light has been given to you for good and evil with free will, which, if it endure fatigue in its first fights with heaven, will afterward if duly nourished, conquer everything, beneath a greater power, and better nature ye freely lie, and that creates within you the mind, which heaven hath not in its control. Hence, if the present world go wrong, the cause is in yourselves, and should in you be sought. Of this I'll now a true spy be for thee forth from the hand of him who e'er it lives delights in it, even like a little maid who weeps and laughs and wantons like a child, 
issues the simple soul, which knoweth naught, save that, proceeding from a joyous maker, it gladly turns to that which pleases it. At first it tasteth things of little good. Deceived thereby, it runneth after them, unless a guide or check divert its love. Hence, as a bit, a law must needs be set. A king must needs be had, who should at least the tower of the truthful town discern. The laws exist, but who sets hand to them? No one, because the shepherd who precedes can chew the cud, but hath not cloven hoofs. The people hence, who see their guide strive solely for those good things for which it longs itself, feedeth thereon, and asks for nothing more. Well canst thou see that evil leadership, and not that nature in you is corrupt, is what has caused the world to be so wicked. Rome, which once made it good, was wont to have two sons, which rendered visible both roads, that of the world and that of God. One now hath quenched the other. To the bishop's staff the sword is joined, and badly needs must one fare with the other, since, together joined, neither the other fears. Recall to mind, if thou believe me not, the ear of corn, for every grass is by its own seed known. Throughout the country watered by the Po and Adige, one used to find both virtue and courtesy. Ere Frederick had his strife, with safety it can nowadays be crossed by any who, through shame, refrained from speech with good men, or avoided intercourse. There are, indeed, three old men still, in whom the old age chides the modern, and who long for God to give them back a better life. Quirado da Palazzo, Good Girardo, and Guido da Castello, better called the simple Lombard, as in France he is, say, therefore, that today the Church of Rome by joining in herself two kinds of rule, falls in the mire, and fouls herself and load. O oh, Marco, mine, said I, thine arguments are good, and now I see why Levi's sons were from inheriting debarred. But which Gerardo is the one who, as thou sayest, as sample of the people now extinct, remaineth to reproach this savage age? Thy speech deceives or tests me, he replied, For thou, addressing me in Tuscan speech, seemst not to know who good Girardo was. I know him not by other added name, unless I took it from his daughter Gaia. God keep you, for with you I come no further. Already whitening now, behold the light which rays out through the smoke, and I must go, the angels there, ere I be seen by him. He thus turned back, nor would he hear me more. End of Purgatorio Canto 16